So I know I already talked about this, but I still want to talk about this Ellen thing a little bit more because uh, I'll be honest, I'm still bitter and I'm getting even saltier seeing how she has responded to criticism. She has essentially doubled down and it's making me realize that, you know, Ellen is trash. She is a garbage human being. Like, there will always be a degree of respect in my heart for her because she, you know, raised awareness about LGBTQ issues. But it just shows you that, like, once you become rich, you become so detached from everyone else. You surround yourself with yes men and yes women, and no amount of criticism will ever penetrate that bubble, and of course the peasants must be wrong. Now, just to give you a little bit of context, in case you've been living under a rock, Ellen DeGeneres has faced criticism for hanging out with mass murderer, torturer, and war criminal George W. Bush. Now, she addressed this criticism that she received in a YouTube video titled, this photo of Ellen and George W. Bush will give you faith in America again. No. No, it won't. It just goes to show you that, uh, one, Ellen is trash, and two, rich people, they put class solidarity above everything else. You know, her class is more important to her than her identity as a gay woman. And, you know, forget that George W. Bush tried to get a constitutional amendment ratified to permanently ban her marriage. Uh, forget about all that. They're from the same class, so they're buddy-buddy. Now, the way that Ellen has responded to backlash is what really demonstrates to me that she is a shitty person. Because, you know, she's essentially turned into a copyright troll. So I'm not going to be able to play that video. I'll link to it down below because... I don't want to deal with any copyright bullshit, but let me just give you, you know, the video overlay and I'll give you the quick rundown about what she said. So, of course, you know, in the process of this video, she told a bunch of shitty, unfunny jokes and then she shared a video of George W. Bush sitting next to her and how awesome that was, you know, pretending as if he wasn't a mass murderer with the blood of thousands of innocents on his hands. And then she went on to condescendingly explain how she's friends with George W. Bush. In fact, she's friends with a lot of people who don't share the same beliefs that she has. And one example that she cites is how some of her friends wear fur. And she doesn't like that, but, you know, she stresses that she is committed to being kind to everyone. And she doesn't just mean she's going to be kind to people, you know, who she agrees with. She's going to treat everyone, including war criminals like George W. Bush, the same way. And she went on to thank George Bush for a good time because she said it was so fun. And the brainless drones in her audience cheered and applauded like the sheep that they are. And that's that. Except everything she said there is completely missing the point. She is tone deaf because we're not just talking about that annoying uncle that you're forced to deal with every thanksgiving who likes to talk about how obama was a muslim that's not what we're talking about we're not talking about your conservative family member who irritates you we are talking about a criminal who has never been brought to justice someone who is directly and indirectly responsible for one million deaths who tortured human beings that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, a mere political disagreement here. We are talking about a war criminal. Would you hang out with O.J. Simpson? Would you, you know, get dinner with Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy? Of course you wouldn't. So the fact that she's willing to give George W. Bush a pass demonstrates to me that Ellen DeGeneres has no regard for human life. And let me remind you that all of this death and destruction was catalyzed by George W. Bush's lie about Iraq having weapons of mass destruction. So, I mean, her response, it was tone deaf. It was tone deaf. I wish I could play it. But um, the way that people responded and demonstrate how tone deaf it was, was they did this. They keyed out the blue screen that was behind her, and they put in images of people being tortured. Images of the destruction caused by Bush during the Iraq war. And once this video started to spread, well, Ellen's team then started rushing to get the video removed from Twitter as quickly as possible. And she basically turned into a copyright troll. Her team started issuing DMCA takedowns left and right for all of these videos. But assuming she has never heard of the Streisand effect, this only led to the videos being shared more far and wide. So, you know, the worst part, isn't just that Ellen DeGeneres is one shitty celebrity who's wrong here. This is affecting 
all of political discourse. Because when you are that wealthy, when you have that large of a platform, you are in a position of power. Because in a capitalist system, wealth equals power. So the way that she's impacting discourse in a negative way, giving people the wrong idea, is what I care about the most. So, of course, other dim celebrities, such as Reese Witherspoon, chimed in, issuing support for Ellen. You have actress Kirsten Bell saying Ellen is her queen on Instagram. And people who technically should know better, like Tulsi Gabbard, even decided to chime in, saying, Ellen's message of being kind to all is so needed right now. Enough with the divisiveness. We can't let politics tear us apart. There are things we will disagree on strongly and things we agree on. Let's treat each other with respect, aloha, and work together for the people. I mean, for someone who constantly talks about how you know the cost of war firsthand, it, it just... I don't get that, but okay, whatever. Um, so, I mean, at the rate we're going, this will be liberals in 2030. Once we have a President Steve King, watch how quickly they normalize Donald Trump. Hell, we don't even need a President Steve King for them to normalize Donald Trump. Give it eight years after he's out of office, um, and they'll forget that he ever locked babies in cages, sold Saudi Arabia the weapons that he knew they'd use to commit genocide in Yemen. They're going to pretend like all of that never happened. They will normalize Donald Trump and I guarantee it. But here's the thing. This is not about kindness. This is not about unity. We are not talking about a disagreement between you and your re Republican uh, sibling. I have a Republican brother. I talk to him. Uh, we debate all the time and we don't get along because we have worldviews that are diametrically opposed and we clash because of that. But of course, I talk to my brother. Of course, right? But what we are talking about here is pretending as if a war criminal isn't that bad. But thankfully, there were a couple of celebrities who got it right. The Hulk, Mark Ruffalo, for example, tweeted, Sorry, until George W. Bush is brought to justice for the crimes of the Iraq War, including American-led torture, Iraqi deaths, and displacement, and the deep scars, emotional and otherwise, inflicted on our military that served his folly, we can't even begin to talk about kindness. And Susan Sarandon tweeted out a quote that was featured in Out Magazine, which said, But missing the point entirely, DeGeneres framed the issue as simply a matter of her hanging out with someone with different opinions, not a man repeatedly accused of being a war criminal. Exactly. I didn't think that this would be that difficult for people to grasp, but apparently it is. Apparently, you know, it's easy to forget that someone started a war that killed hundreds of thousands of civilians. Bush's war catalyzed a civil war in Iraq, created a vacuum in that region, led to the creation of ISIS, who then went on to kill more people, got us further involved in the Middle East and North Africa. I mean, Bush is a monster. Bush is a monster. So I'll say it again. When you see George W. Bush... You shouldn't feel, you know, nostalgia for the days when we had a president who was less chaotic, less volatile. You should feel rage because he's free. This is someone who's a criminal who should be locked in prison until the day he dies. And the fact that he will never be brought to justice is a shame and it demonstrates that America doesn't care about human rights. Now, our country, the institutions that we have, they're deeply corrupt, so of course we're not gonna hold the powerful accountable, but as individuals, we can speak out. But the fact that Ellen chose not to, the fact that she called George W. Bush her friend and bragged about how the evening that she had with Bush was so fun, it shows that she's a bad person because she doesn't care that she hung out with a mass murderer. She doesn't care that he tortured, she doesn't care. So that makes her a bad person. Fuck Ellen. Fuck anyone who agrees with this sentiment that we should be kind to war criminals. Fuck all of that. I'm tired of this talk about civility and kindness and unity. No. When human lives are on the line, we will not be kind. We will not unify under the guise of civility. We will fight you because you are wrong and we are correct.